I had such a wonderful week. I had so much fun planting and harvesting in my hoop house. I also got to take my dwarf root stock fruit trees and plant them into large like 20 gallon containers. I'm really excited about that, but I'm most excited about these girls here. I got to get some chickens and these are barred rock chickens and there's a whole story behind them that I will tell you soon. But I also wanted to show off the Sinagro chicken tractor. The reason why we call this a chicken tractor is because I'll be able to take and move this around in the yard. What that does is it allows the chickens to be able to have fresh grass to be moved to each day, but then it also allows for the chicken's poop to get eradicated or sterilized by the sun. So I'll get to fertilize my lawn the chickens get to eat grass and bugs and I get to have fresh nutrient dense eggs. The other issue that the chickens can solve for you is when you have too much produce. So again, when you obey nature's rules, nature is going to allow you to produce lots and lots of nutrient dense food and you'll get to where you produce too much of it. And so you can use these chickens and they will turn Toscano kale like this into nutrient dense eggs. I know this video is super long. If you take a look, it's like 26, 28 minutes or something silly like that. So you don't have to watch all of this, but I'm going to show you how I built this now. And so that is what's coming up next on Sinagro Gardens. So I was a shop teacher for 12 years, so I know that I just need to get my cup of coffee and flannel on and then get my tools together and I'm ready to build. Hey, you're gonna find the tools list along with the shopping list and the cut list. So let's go through these tools real fast. So the first thing we'll talk about is a skill saw. Skill saws are fantastic. This DeWalt model is actually my favorite saw I've ever used. It doesn't have to be a DeWalt, it doesn't have to be cordless, but this is super handy. The next thing that we'll cover is how we're going to sink our screws in. We can use a impact driver, or if you have a cordless driver, that's fine. Even if it is corded, doesn't, again, doesn't have to be DeWalt, but I'm a big fan of them. So as you can see, this is a square head screw. And so it needs to have a square driver to match up with that square head. When you get your screws, make sure you get the proper driver that is gonna go into the head of the screw. You're also going to need a pencil, a tape measure, and then you're also going to need this speed square. This speed square is gonna aid us in cutting a really precise, easy, clean cut. I'm gonna show you a trick to use with this that's fantastic. You're also gonna need a hammer, and then gloves are always a good idea. So let's go take a look at the materials I sourced yesterday. This lumber is red cedar. Now, you don't have to use red cedar. You can use some pressure treated lumber and that'll be fine. But the reason why I decided to use this cedar is because of how much lighter that it is. Now, cedar is much lighter. It is naturally rot resistant. It's beautiful, but it is expensive. Now, one word about that though, is this build is not very big. And so because it's not very large, you can splurge on some better material. Eight foot two by fours, eight foot two by six, one and a quarter by six. We also have these welded panels. These welded panels are from Yardworks. They're black enamel coated panel. It's got a two by two mesh, it's three foot by six feet, and they're 10 gauge mesh. The first thing that we need to do is we need to cut our eight footers to eight foot. Let me explain. This eight foot two by four is not 
eight feet long, nor is it two by four inches. It's actually an inch and a half by three and a half. So let's take a look at the length, and we are eight feet and about a quarter. So we're gonna cut that to eight feet. A trick I wanna show you today is measuring from the inside of your blade over to the edge of the shoe. We're at five inches. So we're five inches from the inside of the blade to the edge of the shoe of the saw. We're gonna go five inches. So we're gonna go eight feet, that's one, two, three, four, five. So we're at 91 inches because 96 minus five is 91. So whatever the measurement of your shoe to the inside of the blade is, is how far you'll subtract. Whenever we're doing this, we're gonna take and hold on to our speed square here. We're gonna place the shoe against the speed square and then we'll just make our cut and we're going to use the speed square against the shoe as a guide and that will give us a straight clean perfect cut so how did we do we are right at 96 inches if you need to watch that trick again just rewind because it's phenomenal. I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of our eight footers. For the rest of our pieces, we're gonna find that we need to have some 45 degree angles. That's made very simple by using the speed square. Notice how the speed square has a 90 degree angle, but it also has this 45 degree angle. That simple. Now I'm gonna grab the rest of my pieces and cut a 45 degree angle on each end. Okay, hey, now that I have started cutting this cedar, I forgot, that's one of the other benefits of cedar is, oh, it smells so good in my garage right now and uh, it'll, it'll smell this way for some time. So hey, I wanna show you a really easy way of cutting the other 45 degree end. So let's take a look at that now. Okay, if you notice, if you notice on the drawing that uh, our 45 degree angle should be going this direction, and then further down here, it should be going this direction. I'm gonna measure from that point, and I'm gonna come down to 77 and 7 eighths. So we're gonna find 77 and 7 eighths. We'll make a mark here. And we're gonna find the intersection of the edge of this point, and then we're gonna make a nice deep mark. While making this mark, do not be weak with it. Be very strong in making a nice, strong, big, thick mark that you'd almost stumble over. This zero point and then this line, that's showing that that's where the blade is going to be cutting the wood. So from here, we're going to be placing our speed square back on our mark. And then what we're going to do is we're gonna line up that mark that I just showed you. We're gonna line that up with this line that we had made, and we're gonna make our cut. Now, it's very simple. You're gonna to have to do this with your right hand holding on to the speed square and your left hand holding on to the skill saw, but don't worry about that. We're all ambidextrous to some point, but I want you just to take your time. You've got your hand over here. It's a little ways from the blade. Hold on to this board here and just make a nice, clean, slow cut. All 
All right, so now that we've got that cut, I went ahead and cut the other two. And so we have three of the horizontal members. Now we need to start cutting off these vertical members. All the vertical members are the same process and the same shape. It's just a different size. Please refer to the plans. Now that we have our cut list done, we're going to start attaching our vertical members to the top rail. While attaching the vertical members to the top rail, I'm going to set the top rail flat down on the ground and I'm going to place this vertical member and I'm going to get it up flush to the top. Once this is driven into place, we're going to make sure that it's flush down on the bottom side. And then we're gonna take a three and a half inch screw. We're gonna come a little bit further up on the board. Let's take a look at this about here. And we're going to drive that straight down as well. Now that that is secured in two places and nice and flush, we'll go to the other side. Again, we're going to make this flush to the top and then flush to our edge. Tack this into place. Don't forget to get a longer screw in here so that we have two points of contact from this board into our top ridge. After we have the vertical members set in to the top ridge, it should look something like this. And now we need to go down to the other end and do that one as well. Hey, before I go to do the other end, I went ahead and took all of the cut list items and placed them on the floor just to make sure that I have everything cut correctly. And now to put everything together. All right, so by now, if you're like me, you're getting excited because it's, it's taking shape and you're having fun building this. I want you to see one thing up close. This board here, this long piece that runs along the bottom of our frame needs to sit on the ground. The reason why it needs to sit on the ground is because that is all the surface area that you're going to be using to move your tractor. Hey, a quick word about waste. Do not throw any of the waste that you have left over from cutting the framing members because we're going to use this material. All right, so now that we have our frame completed, we're gonna be working on the nesting box and then we will cover this section up with the wire. Let's get over and start framing in the subframing for our siding. As I had said before, make sure and don't throw away any of the scrap because we're going to be using that scrap now. And what we're going to do is we want to have, again, a 45 degree angle on one side and then the 45 degree angle on the other side. So I'm going to mark this 45 degree angle and then I'm just going to cut that. So the piece that we just cut out of the scrap is going to sit on the inside of this frame and we are going to match up our 45 degree angle and screw this in from the inside with three inch screws and that is what is going to allow us to put on our siding. And now we're going to put one on the outside of the coop run as well. Okay, so I'm gonna measure from the ground up and I'm gonna get to about 32 and a half inches. And from that 32 and a half inches, I'm going to take a quarter of an inch off. So I'm gonna be at 32 and a quarter from 
my point down to where it is straight and I'm going to be able to set in our vertical siding just like so. All right, so maybe I should be time-lapsing this, but uh, as you can see, all I'm doing is measuring and cutting each one of these. Now that we have the siding put on the end of our nesting box, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take a break from that nesting box and we're gonna put on these wire panel supports. In order to place our panel support in correctly, we need to take our panel, we're gonna place it, and then we're going to make a mark on these members so that we can have this part of the wire supported with our wire support. After placing a screw into our wire support, I'm going to make it flush. On the other side, I'm gonna set in yet another screw. And then, I'm going to measure from the center of our wire support board up to our ridge board and we're at 14 and a half inches. So I'm gonna do the same thing over there on the other side. Okay, so I have temporarily placed this welded panel onto our frame. I'm using zip ties and the reason why I use zip ties is because they're quick and easy. And when I say temporary placed, this is not permanent solution. They're zip ties. But if we can zip tie them into place, it's not going to move on us. And it allows us to now put our staples in without having it moving around. I'm gonna use a 3 16th inch drill bit. And I'm going to just drill right through our support board. Thread this zip tie through there and then cinch that up really nice and tight. Up next is this ridge cap and this ridge cap needs to go right on top of the ridge and it needs to be centered right in the ridge so we'll attach it here then we'll come down there. We're going to place a screw every 24 inches. Also want to take this time to mention to you, we want to make sure and screw this screw in just where it's flush to the surface. Just flush to the surface. As you can see, I've got different clothes on because it's a different day. I got pulled away from this project and I've got to get it done for my chickens. The next thing that we need to do is measure from our top ridge to the panel that we've placed temporarily. And we're at 14 inches. So we need to cut our new panel. We need to rip our new panel to 14 inches. I set my new panel on my workbench with six feet going this direction and three feet going this direction. If we take and look at 14 inches, we're gonna come down and we're gonna find that I'm gonna be right on this mark right here. So this is where I'm going to start cutting my panel. I didn't mention these on the tool list, I forgot about them. But you can just grab yourself these miniature bolt cutters. If you buy them, they're about $6 and you will use them for all sorts of things. And so you can go splurge on a new tool. So here is our other piece. I cut this to 14 as well. You wanna measure both sides, but they should be the same. But when I go to attach this, I'm going to line up the ends well. I'm gonna slip it in underneath the ridge. And then if you pry up just a bit, it will set in there just perfectly. Now, you want the wires to line up because you're going to fall in love with these chickens. They're going to become your pets, just pets with benefits, and that they're gonna take care of a lot of 
bugs in your backyard and then they're also going to give you nutrient dense eggs and so you want to spoil them by having a really pretty home so we're going to make sure and line all of those up and zip tie them into place okay since we have our panel zip tied into place let's talk about how we're going to permanently attach our panel to our frame. Now this here is a galvanized three quarter inch fence staple. It works really, really well when we place it in between these two panels. You wanna pound that in nice and tight and that will get very, very sturdy. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pound these staples in at 16 inches on center and so I'll just use my hammer as a guide and I'm going to go around all of this. Alright so after cutting all of these pieces to 24 inches I'm going to place the top one up at the top. I'm going to get this in nice and tight. How I'm going to look with this next one fit into place and you can you noticed we have some gap here okay now what we're going to do with that gap is we're just going to split that gap into about nine to ten different really really small spaces so now that we have our siding done it is time to take care of the front of our tractor now these are scraps that i had from cutting the vertical framing members so i'm going to use them yet again do not throw away your scraps you're going to use them throughout the build and you won't have much left so we're going to attach this two by with some screws and then it is going to give us a nice flush part or face to nail our last piece which is the welded wire or our last piece of welding wire to the front of the tractor. Now that we have this nice solid face to nail our staples to, we are going to center our wire in place and then I'm going to place two staples at the very top leave a little bit of space in here in case I need to get the staple back out. The next thing that we are going to do is we're going to cut along the center of our vertical framing member. So the pattern that you need to follow when cutting this is to come in and cut here and we'll cut this off and then we're going to, we're going to have our staple in here but then we're going to come over and we want another staple here so we're just going to cut this part cut that part and then cut here and then this will go away we'll put a staple here and then we're gonna continue on with that pattern by cutting here and then here. And we'll just continue on with that to make this wire be intact, have that weld there, have our staple, but then not have anything up here that is going to be able to get you when you go to move your tractor. Our chickens are going to give us lots of good, delicious, nutritious eggs. And so we wanna be able to get to those eggs. What I did is on one side or the other, you can decide which side, but on this side of the tractor, I left these boards here loose. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a door. We're gonna measure this and I measured it at 22 inches. And so we're gonna build our door to be 22 inches by this 24 inch piece. So these are all cut the same length, so it'll all look nice, but we're gonna create a door. Let me show you how.
So this is the pieces that I grabbed off of our tractor and I'm going to measure them and they are right at 21 and a half. So what I'm going to do is just separate these out just a bit. We're going to be at 22, 22 inches. That's fantastic. I'm going to secure this piece of scrap in towards the middle. I'm going to don't, don't secure it out here because it'll get in the, the way of the frame. Sink a screw in each one of these boards. All right, so we'll flip over to the other side and I'm going to place screws into each one of these boards through this guy as well. We'll be placing our door and we are going to notice that we have some leeway here and that's good. We want to have a little bit of a gap because we're going to be placing these fancy, pretty, decorative hinges that match the black paint on our wire panel. We're going to hold off on securing the rest of those screws because we just want to make sure that our door functions well. Now that our door is in place and we can have it open and close easily, we're going to close it and I'm looking at one last thing for our door and that is placing a latch on the door itself. And so as you can see, this is a barrel latch so it'll come down and it actually has a padlock in here. So if I'm worried about someone taking my chickens, I can lock them out. If, if not, uh, I, can, I can bring this up. What I'm probably most concerned with is raccoons. And so I could put a bolt through there and I think that that would keep them out of there. So I'm gonna put this barrel on here and then we're going to be done with the door. I will say that I'm a big fan of this latch. It is extremely secure. I even have to struggle just a little bit, not very much, just a little bit to get it up and out of the bolt here and uh, it works so well so well excited about getting lots of eggs out of here I know the video is a bit long and I thank you so much for hanging out with me building this chicken tractor if you have any questions whatsoever or if you have some concerns do not hesitate to give me a call give me a text uh, shoot me an email or a messenger message Always remember that Sinagro Gardens is here to encourage and empower everyone to grow, especially growing chickens because they're amazing animals. You'll have so much fun with them.